The first song on the record is called The Best. I came to the realization that I'll never be the best at anything. So I thought I'd write a song about it, but also hope that it would motivate people. It's always fun to aspire to be the best of something, even though it's in fact impossible. And especially in today's day and age of competing to see who can get the most likes, have the most followers, and sort of this kind of superficial world we're living in. Although it's probably been like this since the beginning of time, it seems a lot more evident and there's more proof of it with social media. So uh, the song, while I could see a lot of um, people being inspired to, you know, train harder and get more radical in that sort of way. And now that the song is out, I've had a lot of time to think about the best way to explain the messaging behind the song and its actual meaning. And I realized that simply put, it's about finding and discovering the best version of yourself. There's a song called Slam, and then in parentheses, Angel Miners. It's a concept that came to me out of um, chaos and darkness. A huge part of it was the Woolsey fire that came through here and took down my studio that was outside. It was the heaviest experience I've had so far. It was an eye-opener to how dark it can get and how, once again, you could look at the world in a really negative way. But there has to be some sort of hope and some sort of positivity that comes through dark times. And the song, Slam and Angel Miners, is kind of the acknowledgement of that moment that sometimes it feels a little bit too heavy where the weight of the world is crashing down on you and whether that's depression or, you know, just having a bad day, uh, if that gets the best of you. So I basically made a, a song that addressed those dark forces and kind of made a sarcastic dance song out of it. The third song is called Mayday Fiesta Fever. I'll just say that I was absolutely tickled and honored that sort of an old friend of mine named Alex Ebert, who sang in this incredible LA band called I'm a Robot, and then of course in Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros, I asked him if he would feature on the bridge or third verse of this song. Just an old school throwdown and is a, basically just a party song, and probably influenced by the idea of the feeling that I've always had, which is that I wasn't necessarily invited to be in the music industry or necessarily wasn't an easy place to get to. And so I had to kind of kick down the door in a lot of ways. So it's kind of a party anthem for, for those of us who have never felt invited to the cool club or whatever, and just to get in there and uh, you know spray paint the walls a little bit, so. The song called Lightning Riders, through this whole experience of the, the lead up to the creation of this album, there, there were a lot of things for me personally that I went through that were uh, kind of opportunities to start over and move forward. I think I heard someone say, maybe, like, I don't remember what show we were watching or, or maybe it was my dad, but there's the old saying of burning bridges and how you don't want to burn bridges, right? But I thought in, in certain instances, fuck it, I want to blow the bridges up and move on and not even have a chance to even look at these bridges that I've burned along the way. Because those either relationships or circumstances were bad for me. And I think that people look at situations and having to move on from them as such a bad thing sometimes, whether it's a breakup, it could be um, a business circumstance, it could be any sort of life circumstance, but it's best for you and it's best for whatever that other party is to, to go your separate ways if it's become unhealthy. And I, I was going through some stuff like that. The idea is to move ahead and never look back once you're able to identify that force that's trying to pull you down. As a result, you feel a sense of magic and 
empowering energy that helps you to feel like you can navigate through life as if you can glow in the dark, in the darkness all around you. The next song is called California Halo Blue, and it's about my experience of the fire. It's obviously very heavy to think about and go through. I'm just telling the story of what I went through that day because the bizarre part about that fire was that I wasn't here. I knew the night before that it was gonna be a heavy day. I couldn't get like LA local news on the bus or in the hotel room that I tried to go to to figure out what was going on. And I talked to every firefighter buddy I knew, had a conversation with, with my wife that morning and simply it's like a journal entry from my conversation with her and what it all felt like. And I should mention that the night before the fire, or I think it was two days before, there was a terrible incident in Thousand Oaks where a bunch of innocent people were lost. So all the things that led up, it was just a really heavy moment for, for where I grew up in California as a whole with, with the Paradise Fires as well. What puts out fire is obviously water. So the idea was, I had this fantasy about uh, California having sort of a halo around it that was made of water and that would be inevitably what would put out the fire in this fantasy world. So um, that's what the song's about. Just my experience and, and how heavy it was to not be able to help and just sit back and, and pray. That song's just a sarcastic notion, um, certainly not political uh, by any means, but it's just sort of just a fun rock anthem about saying that I never claim to be anything, just put my best foot forward, make these songs that people hopefully relate to. And There's a song called Battered Black and Blue, or Hole in My Heart. That song, again, was sort of inspired by I was walking around the property and just looking at all these different dead trees and trying to figure out how to pick up the pieces again with, with Aaron, my wife. We're both Aaron, in case that was confusing. I was just kind of frustrated, so I wanted to write a, a, a bit of a thunderous song about how I was feeling a little bit brokenhearted by the whole thing. And so I was doing a lot of uh, self-examination too at the time. That was one of the earlier, heavier songs that I made for the record and I remembered recording it and Zach was around our guitar player and he, he put some cool guitar stuff in, in the song and if there's a song that is it, the most extreme on the album it's probably that one because you go from these brutal this brutal throwdown of a verse into a really sort of melodic beautiful 50s chorus and so I'm curious if people will latch on to that song or if it'll just be just too much who knows but you know that's always been part of this sound, is, is going for ridiculous ideas at times, sonically. There's also a song called Pacific Coast Highway. It had this dreamy PCH feel to it that you get when you're, when you're driving on the coast. But there's always been an element of the PCH in the movies or LA or Hollywood that is a lie and is, is portrayed in film as this, this paradise to come to. So I thought it would be fun to uh, have a song that addresses that, you know, the idea that you maybe think of, of coming and driving the beautiful coast that's in all the commercials and all the movies one day, but you get here and it's actually overcast. And you're like, oh my God, I have so many friends that come out here or family that want to come visit and go to the beach and they get here and it's not like that at all. And so I see that as kind of like a, some sort of a parallel to life that should always keep your expectations and in front of you and a bit level and uh, appreciate what you actually have. Because everybody wants to go Everybody wants to travel, and traveling is a good thing. But I think that we're always searching for more than what we have when quite often it's, uh, it's right in front of you, whether it's your family or loved ones. And I should mention that uh, one of my favorite songwriters and singers agreed to sing on the song, and that's, his name is Rivers Cuomo, of course from uh, the band Weezer. And um, kind of like Alex in some ways, I, I, I'm happy to be friends with him. Uh, so he sang on the song, and it sounds really cool. And um, 
you know, it felt, it felt a little Weezer-esque to me when I wrote it. Maybe meets the equals or something like that and, and throwing a little AWOL in there. But um, yeah, I couldn't believe he agreed to it and I'm incredibly honored to have him on it. And uh, so hopefully the song services, you know, Weezer fans as well. There's a song called Half Italian. I'm half Italian, half Swedish, and um, who cares really, honestly, but I just thought I'd say something about it. And my Italian side of the family happens to be extremely emotional and extremely dramatic. I suffer from that same uh, tendency at times. So I thought I would just have a, a self-deprecating song about sort of looking in the mirror and saying, it's okay, you know, we're all some sort of result of our parents getting together and creating us. And that's my way of addressing like, you know, the super dramatic side of me. And maybe, you know, the part that, that is the uh, hilarious downfall of, of, of being artistic. The last song on the record is called Sometimes I'm a wreck. It's sort of a, a wrap up of the story and the journey that the listener, myself, the Angel Miners, and the Lightning Riders have all taken us through. The song sonically goes through a nice journey and, and has a lot of twists and turns that I think is only fitting for a last song on, on one of these albums I make. This song is, is my way of, of acknowledging that, that you just, you've just taken a journey through my mind and it's time to say goodbye until we see each other at the show or the next album or next song or whatever. And um, admitting that, you know, I have, I have plenty of faults and sometimes I'm a wreck. That song's really important to me. And I can't, I, you know, I hope people feel the same way so we do end up playing it live because there's nothing worse than, you know, getting ready to embark on this journey of promoting your record or playing these songs and, and playing one of your craziest songs and having the crowd look at you like, what the fuck are you doing playing this song? And so I hope people, please show your love for um, Sometimes I'm a Wreck so we can play it.